the October Horathon. It's almost Halloween 2022, and so I'm going to continue on and do another Halloween movie. This time around, I got Halloween 2. Halloween 2. Okay, here it goes. Well, I did already review Halloween 4, The Return of Michael Myers, and I wasn't a big fan of that. No, no, no. It had a lot of problems with that. Halloween 2, on the other hand, I don't have any problems with this movie, really. I, uh, you know, there's a few goofy things in there that happened, but nothing that wrecked the movie for me. I think that Halloween 2 is kind of uh, too often overlooked. I think it's a quality movie. So Halloween 2 takes place, of course, the exact same night as the original Halloween movie did. Michael Myers has escaped from the mental asylum and he's killing teenagers around his uh, childhood home as well as going after Laurie Strode. At the end of that movie, Michael Myers gets shot six times, exactly six, Dr. Loomis will attest to that several times in this movie, and he falls out the window, falls onto the front lawn, they look out over the balcony and they see him laying there, uh, then for whatever reason they cut away and then they cut back and he's gone. But in Halloween 2, for whatever reason, I think, uh, I don't know, to make it a little more clear to the audience that, well, he was here, and he was wounded. And they showed Dr. Loomis like he goes to examine the, the grass where Michael Myers fell, and it's like comically, like, perfect cutout of Michael Myers' body in this, like, super long grass, which it wasn't like that in the first movie. But it just, it looks super funny, because it's like... I don't know, it just reminded me of like Roger Rabbit running through the wall or something and leaving that Roger Rabbit sized hole in the wall. It looked kind of stupid. But it was funny. So I'll give it a pass. Uh, other than that, there isn't too much like ridiculous stuff in this movie. What happens is, of course, they're still looking for Michael Myers. They're like, holy shit, where did he go? Uh, well, we got to get Lori Strode to the hospital because, of course, you know, she's suffering this trauma of being attacked by Michael Myers. He, you know, got some injuries and. Eventually, Michael Myers figures out that Laurie Strode went to the hospital. I guess he decides that he's going to go and finish her off. Most of this movie actually takes place in this hospital, which uh, is the emptiest and darkest hospital I have ever seen in my life. Now, there's a reason why it's empty. is because it's the middle of the night. It's a small town. There's not really that much staff. There's like one doctor, three nurses as a security guard and that's like it and then later eventually when Michael Myers gets there he cuts the power thus making it very dark so that like conveniently sets the mood for all the killing spree that's gonna follow after that now Dr. Loomis is still driving around town with the cop looking for Michael Myers and uh, there's still kids out like trick-or-treating and stuff and probably one of the most memorable scenes in this movie is where they think they see Michael Myers on the sidewalk, you know, and he's got the, the like, mechanics jumpsuit on and he's got the white mask on. And like, what are the odds he's going to be dressed exactly like Michael Myers on the very same night that Michael Myers escapes from the mental institution for the first time and kills people? I don't know, was the white William Shatner mask, was it really like the hottest mask of the season and that's why everybody decided to buy one? Anyway, there's a guy dressed exactly like Michael Myers. He kind of runs away from the police, I guess, because he thinks he's in trouble for something. Uh, so then he runs into the street and then a cop car comes along and just fucking nails that guy and destroys him and he blows up and his body is like incinerated. It's not until later we discover that that wasn't even Michael Myers. We thought it was, but yeah, it just turns out it was some poor kid named Ben Tramer, you know, some teenager or whatever, coming back from a party. Maybe he was drunk or something and, you know, didn't know what was going on, so he's running away from the police. And yeah, sorry, Ben, you're done. I guess I found that kind of funny looking. Uh, does that make me a horrible person? So Michael Myers pursues Laurie Strode to the hospital and uh, then he begins killing people at the hospital and nobody knows exactly why yet but 
Dr. Loomis finds out through a fellow psychologist or something that actually Laurie Strode turns out to be Michael Myers' sister. Okay, well, I mean, they kind of stuck that in there, and it kind of worked for me. I thought it was fine. And, I mean, it's kind of unnecessary because, you know, that's kind of one of the cool things about Michael Myers is he just, like, in the first movie, he just pops up and it's like, why is he doing this? And, you know, he could be anywhere. He could be anyone. We don't know what he even looks like. In here, though, they do give the motive uh, as to why he's going to go after Laurie Strode and why he finds his way to the hospital and is able to commit several... Uh, uh, hospital-based murders, I guess you could say. So there's a lot more kills in this movie than in the first one. I think there's only like four, three, four in the first one. In this one, there's got to be like seven or eight, nine. I don't know. I didn't do an official count. I could be wrong. Sue me. But yeah, he kills somebody with like hypodermic needle to the eye. Kills two people that way, actually. You know, there's a lady who gets like scalded to death in a hot tub in um, one of the Halloween franchise's only nude scenes, I think. Uh, then there's another lady who gets her blood completely drained and some dude slips on the blood and you know, gives himself a concussion that way. Uh, somebody gets murdered with a scalpel and lifted into the air. Uh, another guy gets his throat cut by a scalpel and... Yeah, it's all in good fun, right? Good Halloween fun. Now, going back and watching this, I kind of realized that... Uh, Jamie Lee Curtis, although she like stars in this movie uh, along with Donald Pleasance, uh, Jamie Lee Curtis really doesn't do that much in this movie. I mean, she's in the hospital bed and she has a good amount of lines and stuff, but she doesn't really do anything other than like lay there in the hospital bed. Michael Myers gets to the hospital and she runs away from him. And at the very end, she helps Dr. Loomis destroy Michael, but unfortunately it also destroys Dr. Loomis. Lori manages to shoot Michael Myers in both eyes, like bang, bang, one after the other. Like, she's an amazing marksman, apparently. But anyway, you just see the mask and you get like the two blood drips down the down the eye holes. And it's stylistic and it's kind of cool and it's like, but meanwhile he would have tremendous brain damage and would probably be instantly dead. Oh well. Uh, so he's blind and he's swinging around this scalpel and it's like whoosh, 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 whoosh. and he's trying to get Lori and Dr. Loomis comes in he turns on the gas on this one like you know big pressurized canister right next to him and fill the room with gas and Michael's still swinging around and Lori, Lori runs out of the room Dr. Loomis lights a lighter and <laughs> blows the two of them up cool ending uh, I thought it was neat it was like he makes the sacrifice because he knows that well being a psychiatrist He's kind of, in a way, responsible for Michael. And I think in this movie, even more than the first one, they have like this kind of like Van Helsing versus Dracula kind of dynamic going on. Uh, Donald Pleasance is a bit of an overactor in this one, but it works in here. It's like it's this panicky kind of what the hell's going on situation. And the way that he's talking, it seems to fit. So. Anyway, I kind of liked Halloween 2 a lot. I haven't seen the first one in years. You know, everybody holds that one in super high regard, and it's the best Halloween movie. It's the only one that should exist, and blah, 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 blah. No, Halloween 2, I think, is a pretty worthy sequel. I think it was fairly successful at the box office. I don't really know. Uh, I know it did very well on home video, which is, of course, the first place I saw this. I thought it was exciting. It had some good scares in it, some little bit of gore. Crazy Dr. Loomis and indestructible Michael. Well, he does get burnt out pretty bad in the end, so I guess he's not completely indestructible. So I'm going to go ahead and give Halloween 2 a B. Acting was fine. You know, the cinematography was great. Michael Myers' mask looks just like in the first one, so it looks nice and scary, I guess. Uh, you know, a little more menacing than that cheesy white schmoo looking thing in Halloween 4 yeah it's got a lot of good things going for it and I would recommend this movie to watch on Halloween uh, of course I would recommend it as a double bill with the first one so if you want to watch some good Halloween movies watch the first one and then watch Halloween 2 right after that now as this year's October Horrorathon draws to a close 
I still have one more Halloween movie to get to that I watched this season that I want to talk about. But uh, let's just leave it at Halloween 2 for now. So until the next video, happy Halloween and have a good one everybody.